their timeouts. Do you believe in miracles? Elway lets it go to Jackson. Have some running room to the left side. Throws at the last moment. Touchdown! L.A. goes back. He lets it go long toward the end zone. Touchdown! Play retreating to the nine-yard line. In trouble. Dancing around. Breaks free. Firing. It is caught by Jackson at the 25. Breaks a tackle. Gets a first down at the 35-40. 45 50. He's going for a L.A. backs. Throws it. Looking for K in the end zone. Touchdown! So the Raider defense drops straight back. Pressure is on. John buys some time. Lost one down the left side. Brad Smith. Touchdown. Elway back to throw. Got a man open. Going to the end zone. It is. Touchdown. Granada Hill. Way back to throw. Looking for seven out open. No, no. He goes to Chris Sutton. Touchdown. All century offensive player, John Elway. Oh, John Elway is far and above is the most dominant quarterback that I remember playing in, 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 my, uh, in my time. And he was the best quarterback that I'd ever seen play college. Every quarterback that comes through the Pac-12 will be compared to him. And John was an athlete unlike any other, I think, in the history of the conference. I mean, with the things that he did, you watch the film of John and the way he played. There was nobody who played quarterback like John Elway. John Elway. He is the statue of David of quarterbacks. Size, arm strength. Was a rich guy in his fastball. Mobility. And he'll run. Perfect quarterback. To me, it's about the heart. It's about the desire. Throw the Hail Mary here with six seconds to go. Elway steps up in the pocket. Here goes the pass. Rod Smith up. He got it. If you talk about wins, productivity, he had it. The Broncos are world champions. He did it all. He just had that, I mean, that rocket for an arm. John Elway threw that ball a long way. Boy, he did. He just cocked the arm and let it go. I have never seen a guy move that kind of arm in my life. You think of the arm, but that's a guy who could score the football on the ground. It always looked like... He was playing in a highlight reel where the spotlight was on him. He just always scrambles away and he'll run. He up, passes on the move. Touchdown, Jackson. The quintessential John Elway play to me is making something out of nothing. A defender's got his jersey in his hand and rips it 35, 40 yards downfield. Elway was submerged, jumps up, and throws a strike to Shannon Sharp. You would have to be from Cleveland to know the pain we've been in, man. The Broncos are 98 yards away from where they need to go. I gotta tell you something right now, gentlemen. 534 left in the ball game. The Browns defense has done it all game long. It's now up to them to get that ball back, and we're history. We can't let him go all the way down this field. Something got to happen. It was third and long a couple times. We got this. No, another first down. No! I said that probably 15 times on that damn drive. No! 42 seconds to go. Broncos at the Cleveland 5. Third down and a yard. Mark Jackson in motion. The snap to Elway. The look. The throw. Touchdown! John Elway has just thrown the touchdown to Mark Jackson. Five yards. 98-and-a-half-yard drive. You know, with fire pass 95, wide slant, and I knew if I was going to go inside with it, I didn't want anybody else touching the ball other than Mark Jackson. And so I remember that throw being one of the hardest throws I've made and just barely missed a hand as it went through a defensive lineman. John Elway is the NFL's all-time leader in fourth-quarter comebacks with 47. Nine of them came against teams coached by Marty Schottenheimer. John Elway has done it again! I don't know that I would say he was solely my arch rival, but clearly he was a guy who, going head to head with him, we came up on the short end of it more often than not. Time after time after time, he does it! And he's just bitten the cheeks again! They are never in a position which they didn't feel like they had a chance to win the game. Well, why?
because look who's playing quarterback for him. And the Denver Broncos with another fantastic comeback. When Elway retired, his 148 victories were the most ever by an NFL quarterback. He could take a bad play and turn it into a good one. He had the athletic mobility to get out of trouble. He always scrambles away, passes on the move, touchdown. And that's when he was really dangerous. You let him get out of that pocket, and all of a sudden, somebody comes open somewhere, and he's able to make the throw to win the game. Steps up in the pocket, looking long. Here goes the pass. Rod Smith up. He got it. Rod goes with. Does that better than anybody else? He had the great arm strength. And he'll run. He up, passes on the move. So fast, I turned my head and it was there. This is about as good a throw as I've ever seen him make. Benedict! But for all his success, Elway was dogged by failure. Three humbling Super Bowl losses created the perception that the comeback kid was a big game bust. This criticism persisted until, at the age of 37, he led the Broncos to victory in Super Bowl 32. Come on, Jack, come on. Inside the 10. This one's for John. The following season, Elway repeated the feat and was named MVP of Super Bowl 33. Deep the middle of the field, Rod Smith's got it! In that situation where everything's against you and no one's expecting you to do it and you get it done, that's exactly what you play for. That is the point in time in, your, in everybody's career that I think they would like to be able to free you because it's a feeling which is unbelievable. The best quarterbacks ultimately find a way to win, and that's what separates the truly great quarterbacks from the ones that are very, very good. In the era in which I coached, he was clearly the number one guy in that regard. Sean Elway has done it again. This guy will go down as the greatest number behind player in National Football League history. I mean, you couldn't ask for more. John Elway has a chance here. So we got way behind. I think last time I remember was 21-6. I remember running on the field going, this is our one chance to prove that the 98-yarder we did in Cleveland in 1986 was, was no fluke. I remember the drive. I remember watching the drive on television. But to experience it and be a part of it is something entirely different. This game is far from over. I've seen this club move too many times to think it's over. I hit Michael Young to uh, give us some breathing room and then actually picked up two fourth and tens. Down to a minute 28. Here's the snap. He's got some time. Flushed out. Rolls out. Being chased. Here's Elway. First down at the 35 yard line. Fourth down and 10 play. Elway's got the ball. John is back. Runs up out of the pocket. Let's the pass go. Johnson to the 40. 35 30. Here's the snap, the kick is good! The Broncos with one of their greatest come from behind win. Denver, 26, Houston, 24. To see him operate in that moment, it let me know then just how special number seven was. Play. Go out, hustle around, hustle around, have some fun, eliminate those mistakes last year, and we'll go home and win it. He's very competitive, and he takes pride in what he does. Red 98! Red 98! And I was always amazed, especially in the close game. 15, 10, 5, end zone, touchdown, John Elway! John was the best. Here's the give, it's to Sewell, and he's going to throw. Looking for Elway. There it comes. John makes the catch. He is the Broncos. In Denver, there is only one Top Gun. In 1986, John Elway's quick release and rocket-like right arm fired 19 touchdown passes. Elway's arm has mystified many cornerbacks, like the Raiders' Lester Hayes. He has the strongest arm I've ever seen in my life. I have never seen a guy with that kind of arm in my life. His ability to be off balance and to 
scramble around and make a couple guys miss and then just chuck one down the football field. Number seven was Denver's Houdini with a rifle, who escaped often enough and shot straight enough to keep the Bronco offense moving goalward. There was always those moments that you marveled at with some of the throws that he could make, the arm strength stuff, his ability to feel pressure and get away from it. Um, it was pretty incredible. He's number seven, Johnny throws a nice ball. Yeah. <laughs> He's got the great gun, probably the greatest gun in the game, the strongest arm in the game. You can say what you want to. I don't think I want anybody back there except number seven. He's going to win. Broncos! Are you sure? Yeah! What makes you so sure? John Owen, the cat quarterback. I think one of the things about John was there's always a sense of confidence. Regardless of what the situation was, you always felt like when he walked in the huddle that, that things were under control. Here we go. We need to take it down and get us one here. Let's get it going right now. Relax, have some fun, and do what we can do. He's not cocky, but he's very confident. He knows that he, you know, at the time was one of the best players in the world in any sport. He totally trusted uh, his decision making, he trusted his arm, but more importantly he trusted his teammates and uh, he believed in them and, and that breeds confidence. 29 is counting, Elway drops straight back, fires into the end zone, ball's tipped in the air and caught, McCaffrey, touchdown! When you're in the game, he trusts you, he believes in you, and he's going to give you a chance, so you better deliver. John treated everyone the same. He was inclusive, not divisive, and his leadership was a big part of our success. Late in the fourth quarter, Denver found itself trailing. Whenever we get in that situation, there's no panic, there's no fear. It's just like, let's go, you know, let's go put some points on the board and let's go get it done. He wasn't a rah-rah guy. He, he didn't yell at you. There was none of that that went on. Here we go. All right, left, all left. Draw right, fullback, slant on set hut. Set hut. Ray 14, wide corner, X post on set hut. Set hut, you all right? Spread arms left. 14, fullback post, 12A sideline option, right on two. On two, ready? We called the play, we executed the play, but it was just the overall confidence that you had when John Elway walked in the huddle. We need it in there. We need to get in the end zone, all right? Keep your hands in, no mistakes. Hard double wing left. A right, 371, X stick, Y look, you on, right? Be ready, Rod. There's no one talked in the huddle but John. If it was one little thing he added to the play, you knew that it meant something. And that's just the way it was. Complete control of what everything that was going on. Any, anything that's ever happened in my life, I'll remember when I saw that ball hit the ground and realized that we were finally world champs. The release that it was off me and really how good it felt. I get shivers when I think about it. That game and to finally get that win made my career. You couldn't have written a better script. I wouldn't go back and change one thing about my career now with the way it's gone with this. I wouldn't win any of those other three because of this one's so special. When I was on Bubby's and Jeff's shoulders, I mean, I was like born again. I mean, I, I mean that's how much pressure and everything was taken off my shoulders. I could have never dreamed that a win could be so sweet and, and the pressure was so great. I think that, I mean, just the weight off our shoulders was unbelievable. And it was 10 times more than I ever thought it would be. I'm so proud of you. You know how, you know how good that nice little ring's gonna look on your finger? This one's for John. If anything that I learned is football is a team sport, and especially when you get to the Super Bowl. One guy is not going to win a Super Bowl. The best teams win the Super Bowl, and everybody's got to be doing their job. And when you get to that Super Bowl, it's a team win, and that's exactly what that was against Green Bay.